Hello, Papa New Guinea, and welcome to this week's episode of Sports Scene. As you can see, it's a change of setting for us right now. We're out of the um, MTV studios. We're at the Oil Search National Football Stadium. Yes, I'm Elijah Lovett, and I'm joined by Miss Dini Rose Raiko. Dini, how's it going? It's going great. It's yeah. a beautiful setting from always staying at the studios. So, yeah. Here. So, it's also a really nice venue to actually come out to. So, anyway. Um, later on in the show, we'll be speaking to manager of general manager of the Oil Search National Football Stadium, Lee Pokerop, will join us later on in the show. But tonight, this is what we have for you lined up. We begin with cricket. The 2019 ICC Women's T20 World Cup qualifier is currently underway in Scotland. Now the CPL PNG Lowers won their first opening match on Sunday. The Papua New Guinea women's cricket team, CPL PNG Lowers, are currently in Scotland in the T20 World Cup qualifiers, vying for a place in the upcoming 2020 ICC Women's T20 World Cup to be held in Australia early next year. In their first game, the CPL PNG Lowers shocked the home side and the host country Scotland in the opening fixture. After winning the toss, the PNG Lowers elected to field, sending the Scots to bed, from which they made 101 runs out of five wickets. Scotland captain Catherine Bryce was the mainstay, hitting 45 runs out of 50 balls. PNG wicket keeper with the Golden Gloves Branda Tau scored a six wicket win over the much favoured rivals. Papua New Guinea's Sibona Jimmy picked up two wickets for 16 runs in her four overs, while Ravini Oa, Konio Oala, and Naomi Vare, all picking up a wicket each, contributing to hampering Scotland at 101 runs. PNG Lowers started cautiously in their pursuit of 102 runs, but were able to score at a comfortable rate throughout their innings, with Captain Arua and Oala hitting the winning runs at the end. In the rescheduled match with Bangladesh, as a result of damp and overcast conditions, the first innings was reduced to 17 overs. Despite exhibiting brilliant fielding with Konyo Oala getting a direct hit run, she's got hold of that one, Oala sent it right over the rope. The PNG Lowers went down fighting, falling short by six runs. CPL PNG Lowers defeated USA in the third match, winning by 22 runs. This win now sees them qualifying for the semi finals. They will now face Thailand for a spot in the World Cup. Yes, and the CPL PNG Lewas have been preparing for this T20, ICC T20 World Cup qualifiers since the Pacific Games. And you were at the Pacific Games, is that correct? And yes, yes um, they got silver in that. Yeah, they got silver there. Um, in fact, this is not the first time to appear at the qualifier. They've been attending the qualifier for the last three or two years. And they've been trying to qualify and we're hopeful, you know, everyone's hopeful they make it um, this time. Unfortunately, being um, number one in East Asia Pacific was something that didn't reflect um, in the performance in Samoa when they went there because uh, the Samoan women's team uh, beat them to gold medal. But I think um, a few of the things to note down is, this is not, a, not excuses, some of the things to note down is um, they were very much challenged, especially with the weather and all of those, so climatizing was an issue considering that they were out there every day on the field. 
there was so much rain they had to deal with apart from playing back-to-back um, -back matches. So hopefully this is um, a learning experience for them going into uh, this qualifier um, in Scotland. Yes, yeah, so after coming back, they've been preparing and we wish them all the best in the ICC T20 Women's World Cup qualifier. We'll head out for a few short messages now and we'll be back with more sports scene. Welcome back, you're watching Sports Scene. Now joining me in this segment is the General Manager for the Old Search National Football Stadium, Mr. Lee Pokarov. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, all of you are familiar with NFS, you all have been here for the games, especially for those living here in the capital. But uh, Mr. Pokarov is joining me on the show and he will be telling us about some features of uh, the stadium, um, what's on offer here at the stadium, and also what's in the calendar for NFS for the remaining part of the year. Let's begin with um, some features of the stadium. What are some um, key features of the stadium that you think the public should know about? Well, I think um, there's a few interesting facts that I that the public would be interested in. Um, first of all, it's one of the few uh, compliant um, fields of play that we have in uh, Papua New Guinea. So, as you know, this was where the FIFA under 20 uh, women's finals were had. So we played a total of, we hosted a total of about 10 games here. Mm -hmm. This is the venue where the Rugby League World Cup three games were played prior to us qualifying and, and going on to then go down to England in Brisbane. So the turf, the field of play, the dimensions uh, up to world standard um, and the surface is able to be used for uh, rugby union, rugby league, mm -hmm. and soccer. Uh, so it's a it's a great um, it's a great surface. It's um, maintained in accordance to standards. So we use SunCorp Stadium standards as a guide to ensure that the you know the hardness, the traction, um, and all the sort of um, indices that um, uh, tell you about the condition of the pitch are maintained. Um, I think another interesting fact that people don't realize is that there's a lot of work that goes into the, the surface. Yep. So the, the grass is a living thing, so it needs nourishment, it needs to be fed, it needs to be watered. And uh, we try to ensure that the optimal root depth uh, of the grass is between five and seven inches uh, deep. There's, the grass is actually growing on sand, so not on soil as many would think. This um, ensures that the drainage of the surface is very efficient and um, you don't get a soggy pitch. So those are, I guess, some of the unseen things that have been put into place um, to ensure that the surface looks good is healthy and is able to be played on. I think from a capacity perspective, this is a 15,000 uh, nice. seat capacity. Um, and the acoustics of the venue are quite unique. Mm -hmm. You can have a small crowd of two or 3,000 people, but the way that the stands are um, oriented means that, you know, you can really hear the voice of the crowd and the oh, volume yes. is amplified. That's right. So um, that's another interesting point. And I think the third one is that the rebuild that was uh, done here is in the exact same place where the former PRL was um, previously. So there's a lot of history there, and that history has been enriched and embellished with, you know, the Rugby League World Cup being played here, and of course, you know, a few exhibition games that have been hosted here: the Penrith Panthers in 2016, the Brisbane Broncos in 2017. And then, uh, of course, recently the Broncos Old Boys and you know versus the Kumos Legends, which was last week uh, on a Saturday, and the Old Search Orchids, our women's national team, taking on the um, um, NRL Women's Champions uh, in the Brisbane Broncos Women's Team. So that was um, 
that was very successful and very well attended. Um, and then, of course, we had the Digicel Cup uh, preliminary final last week. Mm -hmm. And before that, uh, as well, we had uh, a day of Digicel Cup finals. The support around the Digicel Cup games has been tremendous. Uh, the following, as you know, is quite deep. The, the competition has been managed um, extremely well by uh, Stanley Hondina and his board. Um, and they've done a great deal in in bringing the regard and reputation of the game from a Digicel Cup perspective to where it is now. And consequently, we as a stadium have taken a decision to host their games here. And that's been to the benefit of Rugby League uh, followers. Okay. Of the followers, there's all, for every game, there's always a big line just outside the stadium waiting to have access to the stadium, coming in and watching the games. What are some packages that are on offer and available for them if you know they're to become members in any way to have access to the stadium all throughout the sure, year? Sure, sure. So we've developed a couple of uh, packages to try and meet the, the needs of the different customer segments that we see exist in this market. Primarily, we've got corporate hospitality. So the VIP club lounge that we're in um, ho you know, can accommodate up to 224 people. And these passes are typically sold out already at the beginning of the year. There's only 224. Then we have corporate boxes which are sold out. So we, we sell the bookings of these corporate boxes in accordance with the um, SP Hunters games. Mm -hmm. So we have on average between 11 and 12 SP Hunters games annually and between uh, 14 and 18 Digicel Cup games. So certainly that's something that we're in discussions with our partners to put some more detail around those packages. So when we talk about season passes, we're actually talking about the season in relation to the Hunters games and in relation to the Digicel Cup games and then um, mem so these are well these are well supported so far but if you're talking about individuals and families yes. then we have stadium memberships that are available so there's no limit to how many stadium memberships we can sell there's no family package at this time but the stadium memberships are 199 kina for the whole year so that's a really good deal sure. what does that give you um, access to well it gives you access to the stadium um, seven days a week um, between the hours of uh, 5 in the morning and 9 in the evening. So you're able to come and do your walks, your exercises. On Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays between 5.30 and 6.30, there's touch football um, on the main field of play. So all the members and their families are invited along. And um, there's a very healthy sort of game and people are able to enjoy themselves and get a bit of cardio as well. And what happens is... Um, if you so choose as a member, we can organize some free um, fitness training for you um, just to get you started. And then we have an in-house fitness training specialist in True Warrior who we can then upgrade you to them and they're the real deal and they'll give you a specific uh, program based on your requirements. So maybe you're after a certain look, maybe you're after you know weight loss. Maybe you're after you know cardio gain, fitness gain, strength gain, whatever it is. They'll walk you. They'll give you a range of options. You pick the program that works for you, and then you're able to go through that program here at the All Search National Football Stadium. All at the cost of just one hundred ninety nine kina per person per year. So that applies. So you know if you if you've got three people in your family, then it'll be that cost times three. You also gain access to the VIP Club Lounge on a Friday night for members' nights. So we have the, the VIP Club Lounge is um, is open um, every Friday night to members. So members are welcome to bring one or two guests along. We have fantastic stadium partners um, in SB Brewery, Nine Mile Farm, Ilimo Farm, Brian Bell. So we draw giveaways every night, every Friday night. We have an in-house band, which is fantastic. Um, one in direction, so you're talking Jimmy Sagodi, Mark Lever, and, uh, and Dion Kombeng, or oh, yes. AKA Kali D. So they're our in house band. They have been for the past year, and we're fortunate to have them again this time around. So, all in all, you've got a great blend of partners who support and ensure that the members get value. 
And that's what's important in the market right now is value. And that's what we're uh, aiming to deliver. So there's um, an experience beyond just the games. That's right. um, it's safe, secure, you know what to expect. We uphold standards here that we hope everyone else can sort of come up to. And that's the way you have to be if, um, if you want to lead in, in any market. You have to adopt these principles and, and live up to them. All right. Now moving on to the remaining part of the year. What are some big events that will be hosted here at NFS and the general public can look forward to coming and seeing? Absolutely. So you're quite right in saying that beyond just the Digicel Cup games and Hunters games, the stadium has its own calendar of events. And so, for example, we had previously before the end game, the Avengers end game dropped at the cinemas. We had a big movie night here. We had like 600 people attend. Um, they were all on their mats on the field of play, watching on the big screen. It was absolutely fantastic. So we've got a, a, a number of movie nights that are coming, and all our members will get um, an email alerting them to that, and the general public will um, be made aware of it via Facebook and, and various other mediums that we use. Um, but other than that, we've got the Digicel Cup Grand Final um, this Sunday, so it'll feature the... Um, um, the Lace Snacks Tigers taking on the Hello Wigman, so it's going to be a cracker of a game. You know, I'm not sure if you heard the volume of the crowd last week, oh, but yes, it was really loud. you know, a full house here of, of 15,000 people is as loud as probably Suncorp Stadium with 50,000 people, you know, in full voice. So we've got that um, coming up on November 16th. We'll be hosting the. Um, Great British Lions here taking on our Kumul. So, as you know, the British Knights came last year. They were the England A team. Oh, yes. The team that's coming are the real deal. The real McCoy. Sam Burgess, you know, every one of those guys. And this is not for this is not for play. This is so you know, we have a score to settle with England. Don't yes. forget. They eliminated us in in Brisbane. After our nice run of three home wins, they put an end to our World Cup campaign. So I think we've all been quietly waiting for a time when we could put our team against theirs on home ground. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, maybe some of our viewers would also like to know when will the tickets be available at Ticketmasters as well? Yeah, for that event, um, there'll be a separate announcement that will be made um, in conjunction with all the partners. So that'll be between government, um, um, PNGRFL. Uh, the British Knights and the stadium. So um, we're in final discussions at the moment to iron out um, all the technical aspects um, that, that need to come together for the event to be delivered successfully. Um, all the stakeholders have their responsibilities that they need to fulfill to ensure that, um, to put us in a position to be able to have that media conference and talk about a game that's going to happen. All right, I think that's all for now. Would you like to add anything else before we let you go? Um, no, just uh, basically thank you for the opportunity to come and uh, share a little bit about the All Search National Football Stadium and of course MTV are an important partner to us as well and, and we value that and uh, wish you the best and uh, to all our people out there in corporates if you want to be a part of the stadium uh, hit us up on events at uh, NF pngnfs.com and uh, we'll come back to you. Thank you. All right, and thank you so much for coming on Sportsin as well. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll go for a short break now, and when we come back, Sportsin continues. Welcome back to the show now to the Oceania Cup and the Oceania Cup ended over the weekend with the PNG Puk Puks winning the last match against the Solomon Islands. Now it was a gutsy performance by the boys against a spirited team who just caused an upset beating the Solomon Islands 15 points to 13. Let's take a look. A perfect afternoon of footy in Port Moresby's PNG Football Stadium in the main game of the Oceania Rugby Cup. The Solomons coming into the match confident after they win over Nauru in the last fixture. The Pukpuks and their many fans looking for a three straight victory.
From the start, it was the men in green who were more determined. Yet, as play went on, it was the little plays that brought the Puk Puk's points. Points inspired by player of the tournament, Wesley Valley, flyer Emil Latu Mahina, scoring another impressive try on the left of a scrappy play. The Melanesian neighbors didn't back down in the latter part of the contest as they muscled in every play. The game went right down to the wire. The PNG Puk Puks receiving three yellow cards at game's ends, escaping a near defeat, 15 points to 13. The tournament victors topped the 2019 fixture in a clean sweep. 89-5 over Nauru and 29-10 against Niue in their earlier games. Puk Puk's captain, Aluho Otio, a relieved man. We knew Solomon Islands was the game to watch out for and uh, they did disappoint us. Uh, like they met us in all departments, lineouts, uh, they caught us a few times in lineouts, uh, scrums. The defense was solid and uh, uh, we had to dig deep for that. Uh, uh, heads off to them and to, to our boys too for, for uh, fighting to the last whistle. Um, what's stuck in for you and, and the boys uh, in the game? Uh, I think the process that our coach set up for us, uh, we had a bit of panic. We went into a bit of panic mode against Nui and we learned from that and we did better this time. I thought we didn't panic that much when Solomon uh, came strong against us in the first 10 minutes and uh, uh, like we were down pretty much 20 minutes of the game, one man down because we had two yellow cards and I thought the boys did well to hold off uh, Solomon Islands attack. After some years of absence, 15 rugby, um, your comment as, a, as, as, as the captain of the side coming back? Uh, I'm, I'm really happy we finally having 15s on our shows and I just, you know, forget the impasse, forget whatever, just good to see boys come out and just play for the love of the game and I hope uh, this will just continue every year. Uh, it's it's good for the code. I mean, good to bring 15s back uh, to the to, to the country. We are a rugby league nation. Uh, the rugby union has always been there. Uh, it's good to have it back now. We put the pressure on the Puk Puks. Like it's a hard team to come up against. Home team. Um, but I'm yeah, very proud of the efforts uh, to keep the pressure on and keep it in the half. Still on Rugby Union, the government has given its full support towards the code that's straight from the Vice Sports Minister, Wesley Raminai. Now, he wants the administrators of the game to put politics aside and see the successful hosting of the Oceania Cup as a new dawn, a step in the right direction. Uh, we, we're just glad that we got uh, the visitors here, those uh, other countries that came. Um, I'm sure they all had a good time over the last uh, uh, two weeks eh, of the tournament. All right. Um, apart, like from rugby league, government has been pushing, pushing the support. Um, any plans for rugby union? Uh, well, rugby union uh, through the government, we want to support all the sports as much po possible. Uh, with rugby union, we need to firstly fix our house first. That's the number one thing. You know? We want to support all the sports, but we got to make sure that if we love that sport. We've got to make sure we keep our house in order, you know, that's the important thing. And I can see that rugby is moving towards that. Eh? Over the last few years, I think we, last, during the impasse, we didn't really support the game. But now we're coming on board through National Gaming Board. We sponsored it uh, earlier this year as well. And now we're coming for this tournament as well. We sponsored, uh, asked them to give us 200,000 and that's when we sponsored the tournament here. So the successful host of this game, is it convincing enough that the house is in order? Oh, that's uh, up to PNG RFU. You know. I think they, they're walking towards that. Uh, that's where they, I'm sure, towards the end of the year, they, they should come up. They, they should be good. Yeah. But our, our concern is we want to make sure if we love the sport, we must make sure we fix our house properly. And the government will always come and support in any way we can do. And I can see uh, a lot of potential. The government would like to you know, come and you know, involve ourselves in rugby sevens. It's a, it's a very uh, good game. And it's got, uh, it's called Ditch on Poland, but I think Papua New Guinea can easily play that sport. 
and even the 15s as well. I can see the women uh, playing rugby as well. Uh, and our women's team has been doing well uh, in Ocean and Richard, and we need to do as, as well. And uh, importantly, the government would like to come on board and also help uh, PNG to qualify for the IRB 7s. And we, that's what we're looking at. We're just waiting for uh, PNG Rugby to come up with the plans, what sort of plans they have, and we're willing to work with them and uh, tell the big companies that we have in the country to you know, support the game. Thank you. Um, PNG Rugby Football Union certainly turned, uh, turned the corner, uh, turned a new leaf, so to speak, in many ways. And we'll start to see that now, seeing uh, um, some organisation transpiring around hosting the events. Um, there's, there's an urge and um, a, a joint um, optimism, I guess, in many ways, and ensuring that these great facilities that you have here in Papua, in Papua New Guinea are, are utilised. And look, rugby's willing to take that challenge to bring that here, and we're quite happy that PNG Rugby Football Union uh, are embracing that as well. Over to football now in the southern regional Besta Cup qualifiers was held over a four-day period here in the nation's capital at the Bicini football grounds. Now one important aspect of this competition was the fact that it allowed only three national soccer league players per team just to allow um, developing players to come through. Copa Soccer Association played host to this qualifier in an effort to find a team worthy of taking on the Besta Cup, representing the southern part of the country. We had uh, 18 men's uh, 18 men's teams and uh, four ladies teams. So the, so the four ladies, we just did the uh, round robin. Whoever came first and the second they disqualified, no grand finals. But for the uh, the 18 men's side, uh, normal competition. We have quarterfinals now, and we'll have the semi-finals and the grand finals later on this evening. Usually the finals are held in uh, Lake. That's the, uh, the, uh, the page for the sponsor, which is Pesta, IFC, in fact, uh, International Food Corporation. Uh, the qualifiers will take place in uh, October, which is next month. Uh, this is the third edition of our qualifiers, the uh, islands to do. And uh, next match will be the finals in May. Uh, it's only the top two uh, teams qualify for this one. Next month we'll have uh, eight teams in late uh, top spot. And as far as I know, uh, the price money was about 20,000 for the first top spot. And then uh, down to 20, 15, 10, and 5. That's in late. Yeah, we only went for the qualify to uh, get the game. Being the only rural-based association under PNGFA, that did not stop them from hosting the regionals and enforcing a criteria that ensure emerging talent can have the opportunity to take the field. Uh, for certain reason, uh, we, uh, we we only allowed uh, three NSL players, NSL players per team, uh, no more than that. Uh, that is to uh, give opportunity to our uh, uh, raw talent and uh, software to come and uh, see who can be selected for you know, a better uh, development uh, purposes. Yeah. Uh, unlike uh, other regions, uh, probably uh, Mumase, in fact, uh, they they uh, they they're supposed to fill. Uh, I mean, have five in the master list and uh, fill only three. But we had some issues out there. But yeah, we, we are very strict now. It's only uh, three players uh, existing. Yeah. The three players, it's, it's only affecting uh, three associations here. Yeah, sport must be soccer association, NCD, and uh, Copa. Because we have a fair number of uh, NSL players uh, from uh, Copa. President Moria Vavina says the sport is developing and Copa has a massive participation and following in the Rigo area of Central Province. And it would only get better if some incentive goes into improving their playing grounds back home. Copa Soccer Association is a, is a rural uh, based association. We are based in the village uh, where facilities and all that are not really up to standard, you know. Uh, but we we uh, we have hosted uh, one of the best tournaments back in 2016. Uh, we hosted it in two villages in February. 
you know, in typical religion, they only have one, one uh, field, you know. So we had to ask the other village to help us, you know. And then to our, we were them, we, we are sent to you know, fill a thing from the village. But uh, the facility standards are not really uh, up to standard. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Portmore Bishop Association, as well as uh, National uh, Capital District uh, Public Servants Soccer Association for assisting COPA to uh, uh, host, uh, host the tournament here in the city. They've been very helpful to us. Sponsorship, you know, we uh, in fact, it was not, not a very good uh, news, you know, from that uh, end, you know, we, we have to sponsors, but uh, they, they never came. Yeah. Even from a uh, uh, from the government and the uh, local uh, members, but I, I hope they will uh, sp sponsor us in the future, uh, assist us. leader at the moment, Rally Kaput in her final attempt. Now just look at this girl, look at the technique as she prepares for this last jump of hers in the gold medal position, fabulous technician and watch the action in the air. The right after the Pacific Games, Rally was bound for the Gold Coast where her World Championship preparations would begin. Although it was during a rest period when she was here in the capital when a demonstration went wrong, resulting in a fractured fibula to her right leg. I think it happened two weeks after uh, the Pacific Games when we came back. That's where uh, it, it was my time period of resting. I was just giving some rest, but then I was slowly getting back to training. And I think I was, uh, they asked me to do some demonstration to the kids. Uh, I think it's called Pekinini Sport or something back uh, at the stadium. So I was, I was so happy that I have the privilege to, to be there for them. So. I was showing uh, them some demonstration and I landed uh, awkwardly uh, on the sand pit. And you know, like in the sand pit for jumpers, we have, uh, we really need the sand to be fine because most of the time when we jump, we kick our leg to the front. But, but this time, because the sand was so hard, so it was hard for me to kick my, my two legs when I landed. It was hard for me to kick it to the front, so it just stayed and I sat on top of my, both my legs. So that's when I, I heard the crack on my right leg and I knew definitely that it was a fracture or something serious. So. Yeah. The 26-year-old qualified for the World Championship a few months back at the Oceania Championship where she recorded a massive 6.50 to win the titles. And after silver and gold medal performances at the Pacific Games, it was a matter of months before this goal-driven athlete appears at the World Champs. Well, looking at missing out at the, the World Champs, I think uh, I'll miss out also on collecting points because of the new system that they uh, with the Olympic Games on how we qualify to qualify we have to attend certain competition uh, the qualification mark is not only based on our performance but we have to attend certain competitions like the world champs ocean year championships some of the national championship here in our country but with my recent performances at the Ocean Year Championships in Townsville, I think I collected uh, a lot of points. And by missing out on this, it affected me. But uh, 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 I, I just have to look forward to my upcoming competitions that are coming up. I think I still have a, a, some competition that are coming up and I still have pretty good chance on collecting more points to qualify. So. She has now gone into rehabilitation with an eight-week recovery time frame and she is still in high spirits. Athletics PNG President Tony Green in a separate statement says, based on her outstanding jump at the Oceania Championship, she appears to be the athlete with the best chance of qualifying outright. When I uh, injured it and I went and first saw the doctors, uh, they told me I will take uh, almost eight weeks uh, to recover. So uh, for the first two weeks, I was just sitting down doing nothing. But then the third week, I started going into doing some exercises that were given to me by Matthew. 
And I think when I started doing the exercises, I started seeing a lot of changes uh, with moving uh, my legs and with the swollen of my leg and, and everything started changing. So with this time, I think this week is my first week with uh, uh, the high performance to start uh, doing my rehab. So I'm really, really looking forward to spending my time with them and getting me back out there uh, to recover as soon as possible and to go out there and start training again because I miss training so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now for an experienced jumper, she says, the sandpit at the Surgeon Guy Stadium is currently not very accommodating and it needs replacement. With what happened to me right now, I'm really, really concerned with, uh, with uh, the upcoming athletes because when I was there I saw a lot of school students that they were coming in and also there are some schools that used to go there and use the, the sand pit. So I think I just, uh, my really big concern is for them to, do, to at least renovate the, both the sand pit, uh, dig all the, uh, the sand out because it's already uh, strong and it's really, really dangerous to, for people, uh, for the athletes to use. And I kindly ask them to put uh, new sand in there. And also, most importantly, I, uh, for them to cover it up. So in that way, when they cover the sand pit up, it will keep the, the sand moisture. And when it comes to competition, we don't have to really use all our energy to dig up the sand pit. It's already moisture, and we just have to dig it up and just uh, get, get it ready for, for athletes to jump in. So, yeah, because this happened to me, but in, in the long run, it can happen to anybody and it will be so serious. So, yeah. For now, she looks forward to other competitions lined up later this year and into the new year. So we're now we're looking at uh, some of the competition down in Australia. I know they have uh, some really big meets coming up. I think uh, one really big meet is their nationals. Uh, I think it's in mid. March, February. Uh, I think in March, February, there's going to be some competitions plus their nationals. So we are really, really looking uh, uh, at those nationals to go out there and, and compete and get some mark, uh, some points, and also to get some some good jumps. So it will help for for my qualification for the Olympic Games next year. So I think I still have a lot more time for me to recover. Uh, I, I, I don't have to rush anything, I just need more time and patience uh, for it to recover and then I still ha have the whole of December, uh, January, February to, to get it back into training and I'll be ready for all my competitions, so yeah. I just would like to say a big thank you to the people that have been supporting me and been there for me since day one. Uh, firstly, I would like to say thank you to PNG, uh, Athletics PNG, especially uh, Mr. Tony Green. He's behind uh, all this and he's been helping a lot uh, with uh, Nola Penny. I would like to say thank you to them. And also, I would like to say a big thank you to Team PNG Medical Staff uh, for, for, for their support, to, uh, especially to Dr. Ravu, uh, Dr. Kapua, and also to Matthew and also to uh, his phys uh, physio that are working uh, under, under him. And also, uh, I would like to say thank you to PNZ Olympic uh, Committee for all their support. And with all this support, that's all I need to, uh, to, to help with my recovery as soon as possible so that I can get out there and, and, and get back to training. And also not forgetting my big sister that she's been taking care of me while I'm here. She's the one uh, that's been helping to transporting me everywhere because I couldn't walk. So I just would like to say my big thank you to her. So yeah, that's all. And Adrian Monaghi will be replacing Rally Kapoting at the World Championships. We'll go for a break now and when we come back we'll wrap things up here on Sports Scene. Welcome back to the show. Now before we go there are some big sporting events that will be happening this weekend. Now, I'll be attending the um, Intercity Cup Grand Final between the Lace Next Tigers and the Hello Wigmen right here 
at the Oil Search National Football Stadium. So I'll be here. If you haven't gotten a ticket yet, please go get your ticket and come support either of the teams. So I'm pretty sure the Prime Minister will be here as well. He was here at the Oil Search National Football Stadium last weekend to cheer on the Hello Wigman that um, beat Wagi Tumbe in the semi-final. So yeah, I'll be here over the weekend. Which team will you be supporting? No, come on, I cannot really support a team, you know. <laughs> support the ref. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right, yeah, what well, about you? I'll be busy as well because there's, there'll be so many activities happening here, uh, business side. So there's a corporate softball grand final happening this weekend. So I'll be out here covering that as well as all the small competitions, local competitions happening. Yeah, but apart from that, let's take a look at what other sporting events are coming up this weekend. Now, if you'd like us to cover any sporting event or sporting stories that you'd like us to cover, just send us an email at sports at emtv.com.pg or call us on 312-9200 and ask to speak to any of us, and we'll be more than willing to help you out. Or you can always message us on Facebook, that's on our sports in page, and leave your contact details so we can get in touch with you. And that's about it for tonight's episode of Sports Scene. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Dini Rose. Always a pleasure to join you. And we'll catch you next uh, same time, same place next week. Good night.